Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Brett here. I uh, wanted to add a couple of things to um, this morning's uh, Q&A. Uh, and so I'll just title this um, uh, The Gifts for Today. And uh, um, I'll, uh, I'll share this and I'll say, Father, thank you for your word. I pray that it is a blessing and an encouragement to all that hear. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Uh, just want to continue on with um, this teaching because there was a lot of things that uh, I could have said and didn't um, for the sake of time. Um, but uh, I want to look at <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14. And I want to highlight some things in that chapter because um, to me, there's no question that the perfect to come is Christ. So I know that these things continue today. Um, I'm also convinced of the fact that looking at, uh, quickly before we go on to chapter 14, um, looking at Mark 16, one of the reasons why I don't trust, um, so I had a question uh, today um, from someone else on a different topic, uh, on a different um, channel, I was responding to someone on Pastor Taylor DeSoto's channel, channel and uh, uh, he asked me about, <laughs> oddly enough, you know, um, why do I trust, or why don't I trust the New American Standard, asked me if I had seen um, Dr. James White's uh, um, book and all that, that he makes a strong case for the NASB. Uh, well, of course, he's on the... Um, on, he sat on the uh, the committee um, uh, for the NASB. He was a consultant. He didn't sit on the committee. He was a consultant for the NASB, though, uh, 95 edition. And, um, by the way, at any rate, um, so I'm looking at Mark 16, and this is in light of the teaching this morning on the gifts of the Spirit being for today. Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 20, the um, text, of course, that uh, according to modern textual critics, uh, people that support Codex Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, um, the Alexandrian text base, they say that this text doesn't belong. Um, and yet, um, it's amazing. This fits right in with their whole teaching of cessation, by the way, because this doesn't this doesn't belong. So this isn't here. So it's irrelevant to them. It it, it doesn't exist. Uh, Nine through twenty, of course, you know, um, is part of the Great Commission. And it's the largest portion of the Great Commission. And it is the only place in the New Testament where Jesus foretells, prophesies, that the disciples would live and act upon these gifts. They would act out these gifts, that they would experience the power of Almighty God through these gifts. Uh, be channels, funnels of his, you know, awesome greatness. Amazing that the Lord would use us. Such an unthankful, unholy race of people. And yet God would use us to minister his word. Hallelujah. I'm thankful, man. I'm thankful. The Lord is amazing. So, Mark 16 he goes on, verse 9, And when Jesus uh, was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he'd cast seven devils. And she went and told them that they had been with him, um, that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they heard that he was alive and had seen, had been seen of her, they didn't believe. Um... After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told to the residue 
neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Now here, this is the, you know, go into all the world. Here's the command. To go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, who is he that believeth now? He or, of course, she. But he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. All right? Um, you can make a case out of baptism being a part of the salvation equation here, too. Is baptism a part of the salvation equation? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Okay. Um, but we won't go there at this time. Um, I'll make a case for that, or at least a conversation about that um, later on. Um, and he says... And these signs shall follow who? Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, there's no other, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and, and he, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, I believe demon spirits are strongly at work in this world today. And quite frankly, if you don't believe that we need to, um, I'm adjusting this camera, so please forgive me. If you don't believe that we need to pay strict attention to um, this particular doctrine, uh, demonology is is a title, a theological title for the teaching of, you know, uh, demons and what they can and can't do. And I'm not one for giving the enemy, uh, this camera just keeps moving, forgive me, please. Um, I'm not one for giving the enemy too much, you know, I don't give them too much play. I don't pay too much attention to him. You don't need to pay too much attention to the devil because he's a liar and the father of lies. So, um, and my camera just keeps dipping. This is not working right. I don't know why, but I'm thankful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. They shall cast out devils. They shall... Speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, having said all of that, if this camera doesn't just sit still, I'm just going to scream now. Hallelujah. So, be patient with my camera, and we'll keep moving. Um... Um, these are signs that will follow those that believe. So I'm, I, I'm now you have to wonder what is this saying? This is the scripture. The scripture is clear. Jesus is clear. Jesus said, this is what's going to happen. Now, if you don't believe this, then you're not going to see it. I honestly, I'm convinced of that. i personally convinced of that. I prayed over a young man one time. Doesn't happen all the time, but I prayed over a young man once that came to me and asked me to pray over him, said that he was epileptic and he was taking all kinds of phenobarbital and everything. And I prayed over him. Uh, you remember what Jesus saw when he saw that epileptic boy, okay? Jesus didn't see epilepsy, what we call epilepsy today. Jesus saw a demon spirit, and Jesus said, come out of him. And he rent him sore, and the guy fell like he was dead, and Jesus raised him up, and that was it. Done deal. All right? Demon spirit. Demon spirit. Not epilepsy. 
And I, I believed and by faith just simply said, well then, if you believe that Jesus can heal you, then bow your head. He bowed his head and I said, Father, I anointed him with oil in the name of Jesus. And uh, look, if you don't think that I believe in the power of healing today, see what that is? That's anointing oil. I believe the scripture says you, you call on the elders of the church and they'll anoint you with oil and pray over you. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and if they've committed sins, they shall be forgiven them. I believe in that. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe that the Lord still heals today, and I am convinced of that. You can't convince me of otherwise, because I've seen it. I've seen it, and I'm not going to tell you something that didn't happen, and I'm not, hey, trying to get your money. I don't want your money. I don't want no money. I don't never ask for a dime on this channel. The Lord is good. God is awesome. He's provided beyond my wildest imaginations and I'm thankful for that um, but are the gifts still for today uh, right here now and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing and shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover the apostle Paul knew this well, how did he know this well, some might say, well, he had revelations directly from Jesus. Yes, he did. But he also had this. Paul had this. Paul had this truth in Mark. Paul had this. Maybe not in the written form as of yet. Might have. But he had Mark with him. Uh, same John Mark. Same guy that wrote this gospel was with the Apostle Paul. And so Mark told him this. And so Mark knew this. And so Mark said, hey, Paul, listen, you know, and hey, I believe with all my heart that the Apostle Paul believed this because he knew it was the word of the Lord. He knew it, and he exercised it. When he got bit by that snake on the Isle of Patmos, and that viper bit him, and it was a venomous beast, and he did what he do? He shook it off into the fire, and he just went about stacking wood on the fire, he didn't care nothing for it. Ah, got bit. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, got rocks. He got stoned to near death. Uh, he fought wild beasts at Ephesus. He, you know, was probably in the arena fighting. They, they put Christians in and they had to fight for their freedom. But Paul, being a Roman citizen, probably proved his Roman citizenship and, you know, was cut free. But he, he did all of these things. He, the things this guy went through, whippings and beatings and mockings and imprisonment and everything else. So a little snake bite, yeah, shook it off into the fire and that was it. But the people around there, and you're looking at X now, 28, I believe, you're looking around there, they, they said, wait, they're waiting for Paul to fall down dead. And when he didn't, they said, ah, he's got to be a god, you know, all right, whatever. But, you know, what Paul knew what the deal was, Jesus promised. Um, If you... um said, uh, you know what? I can't stand you. I was, I was a devil, a demon-possessed lady one time said she was going to poison me. She was going to pray that I die. She said she used to work for the same place that I worked for at the time. And I was the back extruder manager and I handled all of the, it was a straw making factory and, and I had to oversee the extruders that actually made the straw. A lot of work went into taking care of this and she was one of the pickers at the end. It picked those bad straws, threw them out, and good straws went into boxes and the first time I met her she, she walked by me and she looked at me really weird and she kept walking really fast. And I, sh I had my Bible right there on the machine, and she, and she comes back by me, and she said something to me about her job, and she had to check in, and I said, I'll be right there, and I went over there, and I started talking to her, and she looked at me, and she said, you mother, and she all kinds of foul language coming out of her mouth, and she said, I hate you. She says, I hate you. I'm going to poison you. I hate you. I, I, I pray that you die. And I said, well, I said, if you're going to poison me, I said, put it in a pie or something, you know, do something because uh, I'm, I'm good. Hallelujah. I said, in the name of Jesus, I says, I come against you, you foul spirit. Come out in Jesus' name. And she walked away from me faster than I ever seen anybody move in my life. You can't convince me 
You cannot convince me that these things are not true and do not happen today because I've seen too much. I've seen too much. But you know what? It aligns with Scripture. And I know that this is the truth. The Gospel of Mark is true. And the latter ending of Mark belongs because without this latter ending, you don't have the foreknowledge of the gifts of the Spirit that were to work through the disciples. How did Peter and James and John have the confidence to do what they did? Because Jesus promised them right here that they would do these things. And so they believed it, they received it, and they did it. Close the book. Hallelujah. Just thought I would add that. Um, perhaps we'll get into chapter 14 another time. Um, Holy Spirit leads, man. Calls, I follow. So uh, um, I think that is good, though. It was fitting. It was in line. And uh, it was an orderly message. Needs to be heard. Um, Jesus loves you. I love you. I hope and pray that that's a blessing to you. And uh, keep the questions coming. Um, I had uh, a question from Ryan Grandin. I'll get to that, Ryan, as soon as I can. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. In Jesus' name.